Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over the different stages that a work in progress or what they call a whip goes through. Now you might not think this is that important, but it will answer the question, am I done yet? I have three pictures here, a beginning level, an intermediate level, and an advanced level. Now, if you are a beginner and will define beginner, you're just learning to blend. You're learning to use your pencils. This is an example of what a beginner may put out. You can clearly see there's a ring, what we call a ring of pearls, or, or a heavy line going around the strawberry. Not much blended. I, I think I added a little, even a little bit too much color to it as far as it being beginner. A beginner might not even add this much, many pencils. So you, you have missing spots of wax. This obviously only has one layer. If you move on to, an, to become an intermediate level artist, you will see the difference. You've got some shading going on. You are you're now using three pencils at least. You're getting a sense of light and how light affects it where you kind of do it in the beginning stage because I tell you to do it, but you haven't really completely grasped that. But here you are, you're creating something with a little bit more dimension and you can see a little bit more detail and that's what you're working towards. Now in the third picture, it's clearly advanced. Okay. Now, believe it or not, these are the same pictures. I copied it over three times. I printed it out three times. But for my advanced picture, where I was trying to go for some realism in the strawberry, the only way you could achieve that is by getting rid of the, the lines that go around it. So they are there. You could barely see them. They kind of make the page look dirty, but they're, but they're the sketch lines. And all I did was fade out the lines when I printed it. Well, printed it very lightly. So there's clearly a texture on the strawberry where in the beginning level you really don't know how to do texture it's okay you'll get there um, you're working on a smooth gradient versus more advanced you would have a texture and I'm going to teach you how to do texture I had a lot of people that asked me to do strawberry I could teach you how to color the colors of a strawberry, which I will give you the colors that I used. Um, if you look in the description box below, you'll see the colors that I used for this. All three of these, I used the same exact colors, nothing more, and it's all in the detail. Advanced artists know what creates a more, a more realistic picture. But there's a lot that you go through from beginning to end. There are something called stages of works of progress. What what are you doing to get from this to this? And if you keep track of what stage you're on, you'll be able to push yourself so that even a beginner can work towards a more advanced level, even right from the beginning. So let's start going over what the stages are of a work in progress. I'm going to be doing a demo for you today. I'm going to demo the advanced picture because really these, there's no point in doing this if I'm going to do this. I have filmed, I may show you some of it, but even a beginner can kind of follow what I'm doing and how I'm explaining it. The first thing you're going to do is stage one, okay? And that's your roughing in stage. What you're going to be doing is putting in just your lights and darks. And by putting in your lights and darks, you kind of get a sense of balance of where the picture is gonna go. You're not worried at this point about detail. You're not worried about layers. It's the bottom layer. I often um, skip. Uh, or only do a little bit of filming of the bottom layer because it's the most boring. 
Once you're happy with where your lights and darks are going to go, that's when you're going to start getting more and more into the picture. Now, a lot of people do ask, do I start with my lights? Do I start with my darks? During your roughing in, you're kind of just looking at the picture. So where your pencil touches really first, it, it doesn't really matter if you start with your lights, if you start with your darks, they're going to be definite. Um, if I'm going to start with my lights on here, I'd put my light pencil, you know, I would rough in a little bit of light here, some dark here, add a little white. So I kind of do a mixture of it. There is no real set hard rule that you have to start one way or another. It's just that you need to rough in your colors. The next stage, number two, I would call that your layering stage or what I like to call the ugly stage. That's when you start getting your pencils on the paper, you're putting in your layers, but you're, the way you're um, laying down, you're laying down the wax, you're kind of building a base for when you blend. So if I put down three layers and one layer is poppy red, then I put some Crimson Lake down, and then I add a little bit of black, when I go to blend, which is the next stage, I'm going to automatically turn that into what I want in a blended form. It's not exactly the neatest stage at this point, and I'm not really worried too much on detail. Once you start moving towards the blending stage, where you're going to pick up your blenders, and you're either going to be blending with a lighter pencil or your white, I usually choose my white, but you can use a blending pencil, you can use a, a blending marker, one or the other, depending on the look that you want. You would have more of a pencil look with the blending pencil, and I have an example of one somewhere around here. You can use the blending pencil, you can use a blending marker, um, some people use mineral spirits, the white pencil is my usually my choice if my paper is good. If I'm working on something really small and I know that I'm not going to be able to put in a lot of layers, um, I'll use the, the blending uh, pencil. So this is the point where you blend it up and a lot of beginners stop. I, and I don't understand why because the best layers are yet to come. So this is step three or stage three when you're doing the blending and you're creating that depth. Now, you go back and forth from blending to layering because if I want to take it to the next stage or the intermediate stage, I have to put on some details. Well, that's advanced here. So I may take my yellow. Now I want to start highlighting some of the seeds and I'm going to put in some yellow going around as the light hits it. Maybe it's not as ripe as we would want, so you're going to add in that. You want to get out, you want to add in some high highlights. So you might work with your Pasca. You know, you want to bring out details. You want to see. It really does help if you work with a reference photo. I've got a reference photo right here. Um, and I always do. It doesn't mean that you're copying it exactly, but it'll help keep your colors in check and keep your lights where you want your lights to be. So you're going to bounce back between that layering and blending and layering and blending and those two stages. Now you're going to get to the fourth one. Okay. I want to take it to this level. I don't want to stop at, at this. This is coloring book. This is advanced, hyper-realistic. What is the difference? How do I get there? Well, by going to the next stage. Now, I had already thought in my mind what type of style I wanted this third picture to be. I wanted it hyper-real. I wanted to take that fourth stage and really develop it. So what I did was I got rid of my lines because life is not surrounded by a heavy dark line. And that's definitely the difference between a cartoon coloring book style and a realistic 
uh, rendition of the same picture. Same strawberry, same spot on the page, different style. And you can do that. So in this stage, I'm looking at texture. Now, as I said, we're going to be going over texture. I'm going to do the strawberry texture, but not in this video. I'm going to do orange. I'm going to show you. We're going to get down to a microscope. We're going to do fur. That's all coming. But you can't really get to this stage without being really comfortable with, the, with this. You have to go one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm at five. I am now working on my details. I'm blurring in um, the seeds. I'm highlighting the seeds. Now, obviously, I added in a lot more detail than the picture had originally come with. This is the amount of seeds that it came with, and it looks more like a prickly pear. Uh, that's the, the texture of a prickly pear. Uh, this is more the texture of a strawberry. So you're really going to have to think about that too. There's going to be details that are on these pages that need to be there that just aren't there. It was not provided by the, the artist. It's a coloring book. This is the stage when you want to take it to this stage where you really need to think about paper. Coloring book paper will not take you to this place. Unfortunately, and when you want to start doing this type of art versus this art, this is about all you're going to get out of a coloring book. It's not going to be that hyper, hyper real look. You can get it close. There are artists that can bring it really close, but it takes many, 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 many layers and detail, fine, fine detail. The difference on skin, when we work on skin in a book, we're basically doing the bottom layer. You're not getting up and doing the pimples, the pores, the, the, the lines. Uh, most coloring book people are happy if they get a face that looks like a face. So stage five or stage four is putting in your details it becomes more obvious. Um, you're gonna shadow. So this picture did not come with a shadow. I added in a shadow. Um, you're always thinking about that. The leaves have to be shadowed. You have to have the highlights. This is all more advanced in the stages. And you can get there. I obviously did, same picture. I could have done this entire, I could have done this entire picture in hyperrealism. It all depends on what style you want. Just keep in mind, if you want this and this style, you have to pre-plan that. You have to get a better paper. You have to print on better paper. Now, I printed on the same paper. If I was planning and I wasn't, and I was planning to do this entire page in hyperrealism, I absolutely would have printed on better paper. This is good paper. I mean, okay paper, not great paper. It's not something I would create great art with. I use, for these type of pictures, I use Giorgio Pacific 110 cardstock. And that's because it's inexpensive, it pops. I don't have to do anything to prepare it. It pops right into my printer. Better art paper, I kind of have to use my cutter, make sure that it can fit in the printer. And um, usually by the time I'm doing uh, any sort of artwork like that, I'm not using coloring book, I'm, I'm drawing out my own. So stage four, you're thinking about the details, your shadows, and you're gonna do one more thing. You're going to make sure it's burnished. Now, by the time you get to this stage and this in development, Burnishing is not an issue. Now, what do I mean by burnishing? Burnishing is when you take the tooth of the paper in your last, on your last layer, you're gonna use a harder hand. Now, I'm always telling you soft layer, soft layers. It's gonna be a much harder hand and you're gonna tap it down with your last layer of wax. And what's gonna happen is your wax is gonna take on kind of like a shiny appearance and that's when you know 
Like, I don't know if I can capture it on here. You kind of could see it, at least in, in real. I don't know if it's coming out. It's going to take on a shiny appearance. And that's when you know your tooth is tapped down. There's no more room for anything else. And if you're putting on another layer, all it is is really skimming over the wax. That's burnishing. And the very last thing is step five is spray seal and show it off. And that's how you know that you are finished with a picture. Even on this level, I would burnish and I would seal. Same as every level of art, you'd go through the same exact steps. Now I'm gonna go and I'm going to demo. It's only like two or three minutes long um, on hyperlapse. I'm gonna demo how I did this and show you the different steps so that you could actually see what I'm talking about. And I'll see you at the end of the video.
Well, that ends this class. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. And if you haven't seen my last video, how to improve your coloring in just one day, you can check it out here. If you like this class, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, hit that bell, and I will see you in the next class.